this website called Code Sandbox. Maybe some of you guys have heard of this before. If not, we'll head over there. And what Code Sandbox allows you to do is it allows you to create different JavaScript projects. So I can create um, a whole bunch of different things. I can create a React Sandbox. We won't do that today because we're not quite in the React section. But I'm just going to say create a sandbox. And you can see that I can choose from a whole bunch of different options. So I could do like a view sandbox. That's another <coughs> front end framework. There's Angular as well, another front end framework. framework. Or if I just want to have a vanilla JavaScript sandbox, which is what we're going to do today. All right, so I'll click that and it will create this little sandbox for me. Now, notice here in the sandbox that we only have an index.html as far as our HTML files go. And there's not a whole lot in this index.html. It's really just a skeleton here. There's a div with an ID of app. <clears throat> And then I also have this, um, this script source, which is source slash index.js. So that's this right here, right? This script is creating what you guys see on the page. So again, if you look back at this index.html, do I see any hello vanilla or we use parcel to bundle this? None of that stuff, right? <clears throat> so when is that coming into play? <clears throat> Excuse me. When does that sort of jump onto the page? Yeah, no problem. Okay, cool. Does anyone know when that happens, when this stuff actually shows up? Yeah, so once this file is loaded and parsed and run, that's when we start seeing these things on the page, right? So if, if I wanted to kind of do my own thing in JavaScript here, I can come back here and just strip out some of this code, right? And we can even take out the styles too if we didn't want that at all. And now we're just seeing this blank page because there was really nothing inside that HTML. So what I thought it would be cool to do is to build just a very simple thing where we got a form and inside that form we'll have an input where a person can just add a task, something that they want to do, all right? And then we'll have a list that's sort of constantly being updated. As soon as you submit something, that list will now have another, another element inside of it, right? So let's talk real quickly about the DOM. Can anyone tell me what that is? Document object model, DOM. And what does that mean? Correct. So if we want to talk about the document, that's essentially everything between those two HTML tags, right? So if we look back at our index.html, our document is all of this stuff, right? Everything between these two tags. Okay. So what if I wanted to <clears throat> add something to the document? Does anyone know how I can, how I can sort of create a new element? Not yet, right? So let's let's uh, create a variable, and I'm going to use some ES6 syntax, which is going to be a little bit unfamiliar for you guys, maybe initially, because we we become used to using things like var, um, the function keyword. Sometimes we're going to do things a little bit differently. So I'm going to say const, and we'll just say form, okay, equals document. So again, the document is everything between the, the two HTML tags. Create element. Okay. And what kind of element am I trying to create? I'm trying to create a form element. Okay. All right. Now what I want to do is I want to add that to my DOM somehow. So what I can do is I can grab a reference to something. So I have this div that they gave me, right? It has an ID of app. How can I grab a reference to that, that div with the app ID? Yes, yeah, so we can do document.getElementID. So I'll just create a variable up here. We'll say const app 
equals oops document dot get element by ID and then we'll just drop in app there okay all right now if I want to append that how can I how can I append that to my app element there so I've got my app and then I've got this little method that I can run called append child okay and then I can just drop in my form all right let's take a look if we can actually see this here inside of our um, our, our Dom why is my browser so slow Whew. I have no idea why that was so slow okay so we've got our two HTML tags if we look inside the body here notice how we now have this little form inside it can you guys see that so it's been created. So rather than us rendering something in HTML, we've now programmatically created it using JavaScript, right? What else do I probably want to have inside my form? Um, yeah, probably an input and then a button to submit it, right? Those would be good. Okay, cool. So form, let's create an input. So I'll say const input. And then we'll, we'll say document <coughs> dot create element. Okay, and then we'll create an input element. Okay, how can I append that to the form? Same way I did this, right? I can use this append child method. So I can say form dot append child. And then we'll pass in the input that we want to append to it. And hope. I'm not sure if you guys can, yeah, so the, our input is there, it's just a little bit hard to see. Yeah, the outline's super faint. Okay, <clears throat> what was the other thing that I wanted to add to my, <clears throat> my form? Excuse me. A button, right, to submit it. So let's create that. Say a const button, so I'm creating this constant variable, document.create element okay create a button now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set um, a property of that button so I want the the text to say something specific so I want it to say button I'll say dot inner text equals submit okay and now again how do I append that to the form form dot append child right button okay so now we're starting to see whoops um, I think I appended the button before the input so now it's kind of out of order right let's just move that okay so now we've got our input and our button that's great cool now let's also um, we also want to create sort of a, a spot where we can output our list of things right so let's create, um, I'm going to say, let's just create an unordered list. Uh, whoops. So we'll say const ul equals document dot create element ul. Okay, and then down here, when we were appending our form to that, let's also append our ul, right? So we'll say app.append child ul. All right, so we've got a nice reference to that. <clears throat> so everything's pretty much there. Obviously, we don't have any elements inside of our list because we haven't yet added anything. Now, let me ask you this. How can I keep track of what's inside this input at all times? So as I'm typing in there, how can I sort of know what's always in there? You guys think of a way to do that? No, but it actually doesn't really need one because we have a reference to it, right? We have it in a variable, so we're okay. <clears throat> what I can do is I can add an event listener, okay? So any, what an event listener does is it listens for certain things, and then when those things happen, 
we can respond accordingly. So I can listen for a user inputting stuff into that form and then do something with it. All right, so let's do this. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to just say let input, or we'll say let input value equal an empty string. Okay, so when we first load up the app, we know that there's nothing inside there, right? Okay, now what I want to do is I want to change this input value every time a person actually enters something in it. So let's add this event listener that we were talking about. So we can say input dot add event listener, okay? And the event that we're listening for is input. Okay, now the second argument that we need to pass to add event listener is the actual function that we want to run when a person has typed in the input, okay? Now I'm gonna do this function a little bit differently than you guys have gotten used to, but we're gonna use what's called an arrow function, okay? So this is going to be an anonymous function, meaning that it does not have a name. I'm just gonna take in an event, okay, the event, and I'll change this maybe in a second so that it's a little bit more readable. But what we're saying is we're creating this anonymous function. The function is going to take in an event. The event is the actual input that's taking place. Okay? All right. So I'm just going to, for now, console.log the event itself just so that we can see what that looks like. All right, and, and I'm going to start, I'm going to open up the console here so that we can kind of see it. And then as I start typing, let's see what happens. So something here. You guys see how, how many events took place? So every single time I typed a key, we had an event here. And if I were to open this up, I should be able to look at it a little bit more. So it's an input event. Hmm. Can't really see exactly what it was I wanted to show you, but what if I did, let me try something else. Console.dir. Hmm. That's probably because we're inside code sandbox. Anyway, um, so the event actually has some different properties associated with it. One of them is, is going to be the target that created the event. So what do you guys think the target is for an input event? No, it wasn't the button, it was the actual input itself, right? That was the target. So if I go console.log event.target, oops, didn't want that. Let's see what that looks like. So if I go S here, you see how it's telling me the target was actually the input? That was the thing that created the event, okay? Now if I want to get the value of that, I can console log event.target.value. Okay, so let me just type some stuff in here. You can see it's showing me exactly what I typed in, right? Okay, cool. So now if I want to keep this input val or this input value variable up to date with whatever is in the input, what can I do inside here, inside this little callback function? Concat, is that what you said? <laughs> is that what you said? Who's a concat? Don't be embarrassed. I mean, I'm just making sure that that's what it was. So all we have to do is we really just need to reassign the value of this to event.target.value, right? And that way they'll be in sync again. So I'll say input value equals event.target.value. Okay, cool. Now, the other thing that I want to do is I want to be able to handle a form submission, right? So if a person clicks on the submit button or hits enter or something like that, that's going to trigger a submit event, right? So the same way that I added an event listener to the input, I can do the same thing for my form. I can come down here and say form.add event listener, 
Okay, I'm listening for a submit event. And then according to what we saw before, what's the second thing that add event listener wants when we, when we call this function? No. Well, it's a function, a callback function, right? And it will, the signature will essentially be the same, meaning that this function needs to take in an event. Okay? So we're going to take in an event. And inside here, what we want to do is we want to stop something. What is a form normally going to do when I submit it without any JavaScript? So you guys who just came from Python, you should know this like the back of your hand, right? What? Python people, I'm specifically asking you guys because you just did a bunch of form submissions, right? Yeah, I mean, you, that's how you're going to respond to it, but what actually happens when, you know, when I click that submit button? As far as requests go, what's going to happen? Okay. Well, right now, I, I haven't even said that the method's going to be post, so it's not going to be a post request in this case. I, I also didn't set the action attribute. Anyone know what's going to happen? Nothing? <laughs> Something will happen. Yeah, what will happen is that by default, it's going to make a get request to the same page that we're on right now. Okay? But that's going to be a hard HTTP refresh. But in this case, I don't want that. I want this to all happen through JavaScript. So I'm going to stop the normal, the normal form submission action by saying event dot prevent default. Okay? So that's like telling the form, hey, don't do your normal thing. When I submit to you, just hold on. You know, like I'll figure out what it is I want to do. Okay. So what is it that we want to do? Once this event has been prevented, once its default functionality is done, what we want to do is we want to um, basically add an item to our list of items, right? So how could I do that? I know what my input value is right here. Yeah, let's append to that UL, right? That's a fantastic idea. So let's do something like this. Let's say const, I'm going to create an li. So we'll say document dot create element li okay and then what I want the inner text to be is just going to be exactly the same as my input value right so I want to say li dot inner text equals input value okay finally um, the other thing that we need to do is we need to now append this to our ul right Okay, so I can say ul.append child, and then I can append that li. And then if I, if I want kind of a good user experience, I might want to also empty out my, my input. Because it would be kind of annoying if I put in some task or whatever, I click submit, and it's like, whoa, it's still there. I want it to be empty, right? So what we can say, um, we can change input value to a blank string, as you mentioned. But is our um, is the actual value of the input going to be blank at that point? Let's test it. We'll see that, that it doesn't quite work as, as you expect. So if I add something here. Is it? Oh, sure is. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, maybe I can shrink this guy. Can I just delete that whole site? I think there's a way to change the view on this, too. Just haven't played around with it enough. 
configuration. Uh, yeah, maybe I can toggle that in here. Toggle word wrap. Okay, cool. <laughs> Not so pretty to, to look at, but <laughs> I don't know. It is what it is, right? Yeah. All right. So let's try entering some item in here. So eat breakfast. Okay, so it showed up, but what happened? It didn't disappear here, right? Okay. And the reason why is because I then need to programmatically change that input's value by saying something like input dot value equals an empty string. Okay, so now we can try it again. Eat breakfast. Do algos get black belts. <laughs> That's how it goes, right? It's just those two things. Uh, what's, the, what's the difference between resetting the actual input value variable as opposed to the child being resetting the variable? Well, because this right here on line 29, that's referencing the actual HTML input. This is just referencing some, some value that we're keeping track of, right? So it's a little bit different. We have to do both of those guys. We have to do both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if I really want that, that input to be emptied out, I mean, so, so what would happen if I only did this? What if I commented out input value equals blank, but I did this right here? It's still there. That's the value. Yeah, now, now things are a little bit out of sync, right? Because I changed the value of the, of the physical HTML input, but my variable is no, is no longer in sync with that. So I could potentially, yeah, check this out. So if I do eat breakfast, and it, it looks like this is blank right now, but what happens if I submit it? Anyone know? Another, Another one, yeah, because my variable never got reset. Yeah, exactly. All right, so let's just go through this a little bit line by line, and then, um, will break. So hopefully this is this is making you guys see how difficult this can be to manage just like a very simple thing, right? If we're just using vanilla JavaScript. So I uh, take me through these three. So from lines three through five, what's going on here? Um, the first one you're changing an element name Good. Good, perfect. Lines seven through ten, Francis. Yes, yeah, so whatever we pass to the append child function as an argument is going to be put inside that form element, right? Okay, good. Yes? I noticed they used the const variable setting. Mm -hmm. um, just just uh, to understand the difference, if you use the let variable setting, do you like the user going to be able to manipulate it in the case? Or what is it? No, not, not really. Um, and there's not too great of a difference, but basically when we say const, it means that we're creating something that ultimately is not going to change. Yeah. So this idea of sort of immutability um, versus if I, if I use let, that's if, for instance, if I had maybe a number that's going to change, we would want to use let for that. If you try to reassign the value to something that has been declared const, you'll get an error. Most likely, yeah. Most of the time. And you got and, and again, you guys are not gonna do like a whole lot of this stuff. Oh, your this is yeah, this okay, the, the point of this is to really show you how cumbersome and difficult this stuff is when you don't have a framework at your side. Okay. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, we could do that too. Um, but I also wanted to show you guys sort of the power of JavaScript. So we can programmatically do all of these things that we've gotten used to maybe just creating some HTML for, right? All right. So let's keep going. Lines 12 through 16. Baxter. Mm -hmm. And that, again, was already created for us inside that index.html, right? That's not an element that we created. Yeah. Oh, 15, there's nothing but 16. Yeah, go ahead there. Not so much pushing anything, right? I'm actually creating a variable using the let keyword. And again, the reason why we're using let as opposed to const is because we are going to reassign this at some later point, right? Okay, and we're just assigning it to the value of an empty string. That's it. All right, cool. Oh, I didn't tell you to do line 18. Thank you for volunteering that. <laughs> no, I'm going to keep moving around. Thanks, Baxter. Um, <laughs> Nick, go ahead and do 18 through 20. Okay, so on 18, uh, we're having an event listener uh, to the input. We're taking in the input and a callback function okay. uh, for the event. And, and then setting, now setting the initial value to the target the value of the event. Okay. Now let me ask you guys something. Is this function running right away? This callback function? No. When's it going to run? When this event is actually triggered. Yeah, so when the input event takes place, then it's going to invoke our callback function. So we're sort of giving the control over to our DOM, right? We're saying, like, you invoke this function at some point later. Cool. All right, and so inside that function body, again, as Nick was saying, we're just going to reassign this input value variable to whatever the value was inside that input at that specific time. Okay. So as it's changing, we always know what the current current value is. And this could be useful for, let's say we're trying to do form validation or something like that. Maybe we want to know what's in there the second a person types a key to know if it's valid or invalid. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Lines 22. Actually, so let's do 22, 32, and 33, and then I'll have somebody else do this, this callback function. Greg, so do 22, 32, and 33. You don't have to do the inside of this. So is it, so is it the form inside the function? Are we? Am I submitting the form right now on line 22? I wouldn't want to submit it yet, right? Because this is me just sort of setting everything up. So if I submit the form right away, I will there's nothing in it, right? So I'd just be adding some empty empty elements or whatever. So what are we doing here on line 22? Will help regard? Oh, you're talking about line 23, right? Yeah. Okay, but let's stick to 22. So on 22, what am I doing there? All right, Max had an idea. Go ahead. Yeah, or with the form in general too, though. So if we add an event listener to the form, it's also going to listen for somebody presses enter when they're inside one of those inputs. Yeah. So is that, uh, I guess, how do you answer my question? Like, I think gateway is just like one step. Mm -hmm. So in this case, is when you're just doing submit, the event listener have anything to do with picking a domain or is it the initial What's the associated? 
jQuery event on Twitter. Well, you could you could also have a submit event in jQuery. You could do um, dot submit. Yeah, oh, and and that would sort of accomplish the same thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. So all we're doing is when we say add event listener, is we're just attaching something to this element and saying when this event takes place, I want you to call this other function, right? Okay. Good. Um, so, Greg, lines 32 and 33. So, if, if we're parsing through our JavaScript, since we're not calling this function right away, the next line that we actually get to is 32, right? Okay. So, what's happening on 32 and 33, Greg? Can you see it okay? Yeah, so we're actually, these things that we created, our form and our unordered list, if we didn't do this, so if I comment this out, <laughs> and we've got nothing, right? It hasn't actually been inserted into the page. So that's the process of, of bringing them in there. Good. All right, cool. So let's, assay, let's assume for a second here that we've submitted the form. Now this function gets invoked, right? Who wants to take us through that, the body of that function? Starting from 23 going to 29. All right, Giovanni. <laughs> That's fine. All right, Prativa. 23 to 29. So the body of our callback function. Okay. So stop that native HTML functionality where it's going to make another request, another HTTP request, right? Yeah. Um, because I don't want that to happen. Yeah. Okay, good. Next. Yeah, so this is a constant variable. Good. Right? So this is that thing that we've constantly kept updating every single time we type in the key. Yeah. Perfect. And then what happens down here? 28 and 29. Well, it'll stay there until the next time they type in some keys, right? Okay. Right. Right. So that's a sort of reset that we're doing again here. This is like resetting the actual value of the input itself, versus this is just us is resetting that variable. Two different things, right? Okay, cool. All right, you guys did fantastic. Any questions on what we did here? No? Do you want any questions? <laughs> Can I have some thumbs on this? So thumbs up means you guys got it really well. Sideways, like. Down, we know what that means, right? All right, let's see, let's see what else happens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Sideways up here. Sideways up there. All right. Any clarifications for you sideways thoughts? It means that you have to it, but maybe in a few more minutes, you might do it. 
Oh shoot, that's all, yeah. That's always the worst when it's like, this makes sense. Oh no, it doesn't. Oh shoot, okay. All right, so let me stop this.